Bleeding disc brakes can feel a little bit overwhelming, can feel a bit scary, but with this step-by-step -step guide, we're gonna show you how easy it is to bleed SRAM brakes. So, the guide is really simple, but first we've gotta do warnings. Dot fluid, which is Department of Transport, it's a, a dedicated brake fluid that's come from the automotive sector, so it's got a really high boiling point, it's also not the nicest of chemicals to work with, so you've got to handle it with care. So that means gloves, it means glasses, and it means disposing of it really carefully, according to your local legislation. So dot fluid is very unique and it absorbs moisture. So it can absorb little bits of moisture even when it's in your brake system, it can just kind of seep through. But it means especially if you're buying lots of fluid, you've got to try and keep it airtight. Or the other option is to buy the smallest bottle that you'll need just so that you don't have loads of it sitting around with the top off, slowly absorbing moisture, which will absorb air, which will mean that the hydraulic system, which relies on being air-free and just liquid, won't work as it should. Tools that you'll need. Much like any bike fixes on your bike, you'll need a selection of different Allen keys, probably a T25 to adjust the lever, probably a T10 to open the bleed port on the caliper. New ones have got a slightly different system, but we can show you that as we go through. Kind of obviously, you'll also need a bleed kit. SRAM make one, it's really nice. They do a couple of different tiers of it. You'll also need their dedicated brake fluid. So it's dot fluid, it's also the 5.1, which does have a subtly different uh, boiling point. And if you're gonna use it, you shouldn't mix it with others. So make sure that you stick to the SRAM stuff if you're gonna run it through a existing system. You'll also need some disc brake cleaner or isopropyl alcohol, probably some cleaning cloth as well is really helpful, protective eyewear, and don't forget the gloves. First step of bleeding your front brake is take out the front wheel, and best practice is take out the pads as well. You can put in a bleed block which spaces out the pistons, and then it means there's no risk of contamination on your disc brake pads. Hydraulic brakes work amazingly well, and that's because they harness the power of fluid dynamics. Don't worry, we're not going into a massively deep tech section now. All I'm gonna say is that the fluid works because it's non-compressible. So the force from your lever here works all the way down to the pistons and pulls on the brake. And that's seamless and works beautifully, unless there's air in the system. Because as you'll know, like with an air fork and an air shock, that is compressible. So by adjusting the brake lever up to a higher position will hopefully help chase all of that air out of the system. With this fancier lever, we've got tool-free lever adjustment, so we can dial the lever away from the bar or into the bar, and we've also got a pad contact adjuster as well. So we've moved the lever out a little bit, and we're gonna adjust the contact patch all the way out as well, so it means that there's as much lever throw as possible. That just gives us more space for the reservoir and the bleed to work and get us all the air out of the system. So we've pre-filled our syringes with about two-thirds of dot fluid, uh, and then the reason why we filled them, both of them with the same amount is because we're gonna cycle the fluid up from the bottom to the top and then back down again. So it's quite different to a lot of different systems. This one is kind of slightly fancier because it uses SRAM's bleeding edge port on the lower uh, caliper for the mounting. Um, but essentially it's a similar technique if you don't have bleeding edge to this top one. So we're just gonna put in a T10, take out the bolt, store it safely. There's an O-ring as well, so make sure you don't lose that. Even with fresh fluid, SRAM recommends that you use their syringes with this little uh, closed port up here, this little crimp for the hose, and then you pull the syringe down and that helps pull out and draw out under vacuum pressure any kind of moisture or air that could be trapped in the fluid. So we're just gonna preload that on both syringes. You can see some of it bubbling up here. The fluid is fairly clear, but we'll add a little bit more, try and get rid of a little bit more, cycle this a couple more times to get rid of any air that might have been absorbed because this fluid can absorb moisture and if it can absorb moisture you can get bits of air and oxygen in there too. With the syringe and the fluid prepped time to insert it into the lever and it's okay to let this one dangle whilst we add the syringe to the caliper below. With the bleeding edge port kind of screwed in and, and opened in place it's time to open the, the little clips on both syringes uh, make sure that the top lever one is vertical and then just apply some kind of even pressure on the syringe and hopefully we will push through the fresh brake fluid. Be mindful not to empty out either syringe completely. 
and work from pushing the fluid up into the lever and then using a vacuum pull to pull the fluid back down through the caliper. Once you've cycled the fluid once uh, from the lever back down to the caliper, it's time to work it back up and keep going back and forth until you're getting rid of all those bubbles. As you can see, we're still getting a few here. Keep working the fluid under vacuum pressure from the caliper up to the lever and then back down again, again using vacuum pressure to help pull back down to the caliper. With both syringes pulling fairly clear fluid now with no bubbles, it's time just to cycle the brake lever good few hard times just to dislodge any other air that might be trapped in the system. So pretty consistent now, we're not getting any bubbles. So I'm gonna say it's time to close off the caliper uh, and then that's locked off, we can pull that off later. With the caliper closed off, it's now time just to double check that the lever is all bled. So we're gonna cycle the syringe down a couple of times, flick the brake lever, push down a couple more times and it's great. There's no bubbles at all, so I'm really happy that this system is all set. So time to take this syringe off. So just be mindful, even with the syringe locked off, you can get fluid pouring out. So just make sure that you've got a rag ready to kind of mop up any excess. Make sure you pop that bolt in really quickly because we want to minimize any kind of air exposure to that dot fluid. Uh, and make sure the O-ring is in, in the right space. Once that's all done up, there will be a bit of overspill, don't worry, that's normal. We're gonna use some isopropyl alcohol or disc brake cleaner just to gently mist that area and make sure that we take off any excess fluid. We've already closed off this bleeding edge port, but if you've got a non-bleeding edge port, you'll have to do a kind of quick, quick exchange of taking the syringe off and getting the bolt in really quickly. It can be a little bit messy, but make sure you do it quickly. With the bleeding edge port, it's really quite simple. We'll just lock out the syringe and then slide it out, like so. Even though the bleeding edge port is really clean, just make sure it's completely free of any brake fluid. Then replace the rubber grommet to protect it. Take the piston spacer out, put the pads back in, put the front wheel back in. Once all that's done down here, it's time to set up the lever as you'd like. So getting the angle correct, making sure that the reach adjustment is correct, and if you've got the contact pad adjustment, you get that dialed in as well. Hopefully this step-by-step -step guide has been really helpful. But what brakes are you using? Are you using SRAM? Are you on Shimano? Are you on TRP? Let us know in the comments below.